What's up, everyone? All right, so here we are Monday morning, first full week of July without a holiday, and I'm finishing the day up $2,375. So green is good. I'm happy with that, but when we break down the stocks that I trade today, you'll see that I started the day with two back-to-back -back losses that nearly put me below my max loss. I mean, I was just shy of my max loss. And fortunately, I was able to start digging myself out of the hole. One small trade, another small trade, and I made a little here, a little there, a little there, and next thing you know, I'm breaking through $2,000 of profit from nearly the max loss to above the daily goal, which is awesome. So I feel good about that, but uh, definitely a little bit of a, uh, a caution flag, just to be careful, because Friday was a little bit of a close call, and then here again, on Monday, a little bit of a close call. So tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm gonna start with smaller share size. So if I do take losses right out of the gates, at least they hopefully won't put me below my max loss or really close to it. I don't wanna have a, that big hole that I have to spend the rest of the morning digging myself out of. Today was a record in terms of the number of trades I took. Usually, once I hit a good amount of profit, I walk away, I'm done for the day. But today, trying to get myself out of the hole, I kept trading a little more than I normally would. And, and that's another area where you have to be a little careful because when you overtrade, you know, you can reduce the quality threshold of what you're willing to trade and then inevitably your accuracy can go down. So a little bit of a close call today, but uh, I, I climbed back up that stairway of heaven and now $2,300 of profit. Green is good. So we're going to break it down in today's Midday Market Recap. What's up everyone? All right, so we're gonna go over the trades from this morning, finishing the day up $2,375.52. Green is good. Now today uh, was actually not an easy day. I started going deep into the red uh, and then I had to dig myself out of the hole. Now, fortunately today I didn't go below my max loss, so I was still within a range where I could dig myself out of the hole uh, which is uh, really good. So the big winner today was on staff, S-T-A-F. Right now it's up 229%. And when I first saw it, it was at $2. It's up uh, right now at $4.50. I had my best exit right around, I don't know, 480 or so. It hit a high of I think 487. And I'm up uh, just on that stock alone, $5,759, which is crazy. So. Um, definitely loving the momentum. I mean, we still have it in the market. It's just been, you know, a little bit choppy. It's kind of, um, you know, finding which stock is going to start moving and, and really take off. It's kind of like, um, I don't know, we start to see things take off and it's like, oh, it looks like it's going to, you know, this is the next stock that's going to go. And then it, it fades all the way back down. And so when that happens, um, obviously I get stopped out. I take a loss and it's a little bit frustrating. What's up everyone, I see you guys logging in on uh, Facebook. Again, so you guys, uh, any questions, any comments, leave them below, I'll come back through and answer them later. Those of you watching YouTube um, later this afternoon, I'll come back um, and answer any questions and comments you guys have as well. Also, reminder, this coming Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern, we're hosting an Encore webinar. We had our webinar last week, it was a great turnout, but we had a lot of people that missed it or who got into the webinar and then ended up having um, audio issues and stuff like that. So we're hosting an encore this coming Thursday, 1 p.m. Eastern. Book your calendar, click to register. The link is right in the description here on Facebook. I'll put it in the description on YouTube as well. All right, so um, with that, let's jump in and start breaking down um, the stocks that I traded this morning. All right, so I'm gonna um, shrink that like that. All right, and go like that. All right. So let me drag up my, um, my broker window. All right, so here we are, finishing the morning up $2,375.52. Green is good, and you can see the warning on my account right here, global trading set to all trading allowed. My PNL is greater than negative $4,990. If I'm down more than $5,000 on the day, I cannot take another trade. I called my broker and I asked him to set that up for me because, um, you know, last month in June I had taken a pretty good size loss and it was a day where I was already down more than 5,000 and I should have just stopped trading 
And I kept trading, I kept pushing my luck, and ended up finishing the day, the day down $16,000, which was really um, disappointing. It was either my second or third worst day ever. And uh, I'm, I'm, I, I know I can do better than that. I mean, that's just, you know, I I'm, I'm should be a better trader not to let myself go that far in the red, but it helps to automate some of that stuff. So now I've automated it with my broker. If I'm down more than 5,000, they won't let me take new trades. So today I went into the red. I was actually down $4,600 on my first couple trades. First trade was on BNTC, I lost three grand. Second trade, SSY, I lost $1,500. So on those two trades, I'm down $4,600. So I was like $300 off my max loss uh, before finally bouncing back. So let's look at the, um, the ones that I traded. So BNTC, all right, so on this one, um, this was a gapper and you know initially it was our, it was our second leading gapper. Every single day starts the same way. Um, those of you who have attended um, you know a webinar in the past, you know that we talk about how to use these scanners. And so just to kind of you know go over it um, in summary, I look at the scan around 9:15 a.m. and this shows me all the stocks that are going to open more than 5% versus yesterday's close, which indicates um, some strong momentum has already begun. I usually look at the top 10 or so. Leading gapper was MBVX, already gapping up 222% with news, and the second was BNTC gapping up 85% also with news. So BNTC had a pre-market high of 587, and I was watching it because I thought if it broke back over five, we might have a chance of kind of filling this gap up towards 587. So the bell rings and it starts surging up, and I ended up jumping in, I, and I took so many trades today, but I ended up jumping in this one at, um, let's see, I got in at four, uh, two, 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 let me go back here. I got in this one at um, 479, 480, 480, and I added it 490. I thought this thing was gonna break $5. I mean, I was being aggressive, 10,000 shares, I was thinking it would break five, squeeze up to 520, maybe 550, it would be a good winner. And then look at what happens. A minute later, it's all the way back down here at 413. So this is what we would call a um, pretty sharp rejection uh, of the whole dollar. So it just couldn't break that level and it came back down. So I ended up stopping out as it came back down. Uh, I got a partial fill at 86. Once I added and then it was going back down, I was like, okay, I gotta start easing up. So I tried to sell what I added. I got a partial fill, sold more at 67, more at 55, more at 26, and the rest at 18. So I really sold, I mean, I, I sold like down into the flush. I mean, I, I hate doing that, but at a certain point, you're hitting your max loss and you have to. So I lost $3,000 on that, which is 30 cents on 10,000 shares. Uh, you know, obviously for 10,000 shares, it's not that bad of a loss. Uh, it's only 30 cents, but it's definitely disappointing. I hate starting the day and starting the week with a red trade, but that's what happened. So start in the red with this rejection. And then I'm watching the scanners. MBVX was on our uh, watch list pre-market, but when the bell rang, it, I don't know, it just, it dipped down for a second. And so I sort of ignored it because it dropped down to 89 and then it surged back up here broke through $2 and hit a high of 237. And I missed it because in these two minutes I was trading uh, BNTC. So I missed this trade completely and I just felt like I was chasing it. So I just left this one alone. I didn't even trade it at all today. I just totally left it alone. Um, so then I'm watching the high day momentum scanners and these scanners show us stocks that are squeezing up in real time right now. So BNTC was on the scans. I jump into it, lose money on it. Staff was on the scan right there at $1.88. And it was actually on our watch list um, pre-market. However, because it had popped up all the way to three and then sold off, I thought it looked too weak. So I, I really wasn't very interested in it at that time. So BNTC, 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 MBVX, staff, staff, staff is hitting the scanners a couple more times. Uh, staff ends up hitting a high of two, uh, like 220, 224, 225, and then dropping all the way down to 182. That's a 40 cent drop. 
that's pretty substantial on a cheap stock. And so I was like another false breakout, just like BNTC, it looks like we're gonna see a kind of a crappy market. SSYS, it hits the scanners, or SSY, uh, hits the scanners, I jump in uh, at 71, and then I added it at uh, 92. I thought it was gonna break over um, the whole dollar. It hits 202. I sold, I tried to sell half and I got a partial fill at 99. Tried to sell on the bid at 90 and then it just flushed down and I ended up selling the rest at um, $1.49. So I lost 1,500 bucks on that one. And again, this ended up dropping higher than, you know, dropping more than the place it started. It went all the way down. So now we have like three rejections on the day. We've got BNTC, we've got staff, and we've got SSY. Now, when staff curled back up and broke over that 220 spot, that's when I was like, all right, I'm gonna give this thing a chance. So at this point, I was down $4,600 on the day, $4,600, I was in the red, and I was not happy about it. But, you know, it starts to squeeze up, so I jump in here as it's going up, thinking maybe it'll squeeze into a circuit breaker halt. It hits a high of 74, then pulls back a little bit, hits a high of 87, a couple little scalps here, and I'm uh, still holding here, and then I sell, my very best exit was up here at uh, 299. So let me just scroll down, where was this? I, there were so many trades on this. Um, I was getting in, getting back out, getting back in. So best exit up here was at 70, was at 97 and 99 right there, which was pretty good. I was, I was happy with that. So I started making money back. I think I was made like $1,500 back on that trade. And so I was down only 3,000 on the day. And then we see a couple little opportunities, a couple other stocks hit the scanners, XT, uh, XTLB. This was actually called out in the chat room. Um, which is good. Sometimes traders in the chat room will see stuff that I don't see or will see stuff that our scanners don't catch. So I jumped into this one. It pops up from about 220 up to uh, 260. Again, the first move sort of gets rejected and then it curls back up. So that's really the thing to look for right now is let it pop up, pull back, and then if it goes above this level, that's the spot I'm interested. So I got in as it surged back up here. Uh, TGC, similar. Uh, this one I jumped in. Uh, it first popped up to a dollar um, twelve. It then pulls back. It's sort of inside this candle. It drops down, and then as it surges back up, I bought at two eighteen or a dollar eighteen, and added a dollar twenty. High a day was a dollar twenty four. So made seven hundred bucks on that one. You know, a couple small winners here. So with these, you know, I was able to get myself down to red, I don't know, maybe $1,500 on the day. Uh, so still in the red, digging myself out, one trade at a time, small winners. SECO, I jumped in this one at um, right here at 450. Pops up to a high of 453 and drops down. Only made uh, $49 on it. Small winner, whatever. And then uh, back to staff. This is the one that, um, you know, for me, gave me such nice um, winners. So once it broke over three, it came up, it tapped three, it pulled back, and then it started to curl back up. So right here is where I started adding for the break of three. So I added it, I want to say it was like 78 or something like that. So let's see. Um, let's scroll down a little bit. Um, so I added on staff at, you know, I, I, again, just so many trades on this, getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out, um, added at 80 and 87 and 87 and 89. So taking some size, I was expecting an immediate break over three. It's a little bit choppy. So I ended up adding it in 295, selling at 99, 96 couple partial fills, orders that wouldn't fill. This is when I try to sell on the ask and I have to cancel it. Um, then selling at 90 and then getting back in as it pops back up, 315. So this was sort of just scalping. You know, getting in around this area for the test of three, adding as it's going up. We hit a high of 37. We then pull back, you know, consolidation in here. So all of this area for me is just like getting in, getting out, getting in, getting out based on reading the time in sales, which is this window here. So when I see, you know, 
a, a huge streak of green and lots of buyers, I often jump in as early as I can, kind of ride that momentum that you're seeing uh, in the time in sales. You're not gonna see it as much now as we're getting closer to the lunch hour, but um, overall some good trades on this one. And then right in here at a dollar, uh, at three dollars and forty-five cents, we were consolidating right here, and that's where I took my final. Uh, this was the really good trade. I got in here at three forty-five for the break over the half dollar, and boom, it popped up from three forty-five all the way up to a high of four eighty, and it had a circuit breaker halt. The sad thing is, I wasn't nearly as aggressive as I could have been because at this time right here, when I took the trade, I was still down around eight hundred dollars on the day. And I had said, you know, I don't want to go back down below a thousand in the red. So I can only risk $200 on this trade. I can't be really, really aggressive. And, you know, so I get back in, it squeezes up and I end up adding and, and I got a good win on it. But yeah, I mean, obviously I did. I made like $3,600 or $3,000 because I went from down 600 to up uh, actually $2,998 on the day, which was my high of day. And uh, then I took a couple scalps right here on a one minute micro pullback, jumped in there, it didn't hold. And I tried to get back in at 87 for the break over five and that didn't hold. So I gave back about 600 bucks on those last two trades. And that's when I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done for the day. Green is good, especially after such a rough start. So finishing up $2,375 and it was not easy. Today was not an easy day. Uh, it was just, you know, it was just very choppy. And you, so you can see here, I'm green on three stock, or green on four, red on three. This is basically a break even trade. I mean, that's $49 is not profit to me. That's just nothing really. Um, but, you know, so three winners and, and, and four losers basically. Just choppy. Um, my total accuracy today Looks like it's around 66%. Uh, average winner, only 10 cents. Average loser, 13 cents. So small wins, uh, a couple of bigger losers, especially on that um, BNTC trade. So 31 cents was my biggest loser and 20 cents was my biggest winner, including scaling out, right? If I sell half at 20 cents of profit and the other half at, at, at 40 cents of profit, my total is 30 cents, right? It's it's the average of the two. So, um, you know, green is good. I'm, I'm gonna be happy with that. Today was a really close call. I was only about $300 away from hitting my max loss and, you know, having to say, I'm down $5,000 today, guys, and that's it. You know, I'll, I'll try to make it back tomorrow or, or later in the week, but uh, fortunately I was able to uh, recover off those lows, curl back up, so right now up right around 14,000 or so on the month, 328,000 on the year, you know, 665,000 in my small account um, from when I first started with $583. So, you know, green is good. It's another day, you know, another dollar progress is being made, but uh, hopefully we'll see a little bit of cleaner momentum um, tomorrow. You know, I'd really like to see the stock like BNTC, the leading gapper, be clean. Our two leading gappers today, a BNTC and MBVX, neither one of them were really that easy to trade. MBVX, you know, ended up, has, has held up a little bit better, but, you know, it also did a false breakout up here, then sold off down here, got halted going down, you know, squeezed back up, but then got halted going back down again. It just kind of choppy. So, I don't know, maybe if it breaks over 250, it'll be interesting, but the volume is 14 million shares. So at this point, uh, it's pretty crowded. So a lot of tug of war there. So I, I think for me, the smart thing to do is to close up shop here. Um, you know, today was a little bit of a close call. And you know what, Friday was also a little bit of a close call for me. So, you know, the more you push your luck, you know, inevitably you're gonna get caught with that big loss. So I gotta be, um, you know, I gotta be a little bit careful going into the market tomorrow. Maybe I'll start with uh, initially a little bit of smaller size. I won't start with 10,000 shares. I'll start with like 5,000 and then I can always add. That way if I do get caught in false breakouts on those first couple of trades, they won't be too, too painful. Uh, it, you know, recovering from being down 4,600 is really not easy. It's actually pretty rare that I would have a day like today. 
usually if I'm down 4,600, that, that's it. You know, I, maybe I'll make back a little bit and close down three grand, but I'm almost definitely still closing in the red. So today, you know, staff was my, um, you know, my, my lucky stock. This was the bailout that I got. And, um, you know, I'm glad that it was as strong as it was because I, I definitely needed that. But unfortunately, I wasn't even able to capitalize on it as well as I could have. Considering it's up 100%, being up only $5,700 feels like it's not a lot. Um, but, you know, that's mostly because I, when I was at my max loss or so close to my max loss, I really couldn't afford to uh, take a lot of risk on those early trades. So, you know, yes, I've hit my max loss. Um, I hit it twice last month. Um, I'm just let me look back here on my June calendar. I believe it was twice that I hit it. Yeah, I hit my max loss twice last month. Um, I had four red days, but two of them were max loss. In May, I hit my max loss um, once. No, sorry, twice. Uh, I hit it twice in May. In April, I hit my max loss um, twice. And it was two days back to back, which was not fun. You know, in March, I hit my max loss once. Uh, yeah, only once in March, which was good. Um, February, I hit it a couple times. January, I hit it once. So, you know, it's um, actually January. No, I didn't actually hit it. I was down 4,600. So that wasn't quite it. So I didn't hit it in January. But, you know, um, in any case, this was a close call today, so just got to keep that, you know, in my mind tomorrow that today was a close call and I got to scale back a little bit. I don't want to see this this warning here. This happens anytime you go red, it warns you. And I actually think that on my trade on staff, on that first trade where I got in, I was actually holding and for a moment I might have been down more than 5,000, but I was holding it and then it curled back up. So it, the max loss doesn't turn on until you press the sell button. And on that one, I was able to, um, you know, it ended up curling back up, so I didn't end up taking the loss. It ended up being a small winner. So anyways, I'm going to set my um, max size tomorrow for 7,500 shares to start. Um, and then I can always increase that if I'm feeling confident. But just try to take it a little easy tomorrow. If I can make 500 to 1,000 bucks, that's good. But we'll need to have that one stock that's really showing strength. Today it was staff and that was about it. So um, a good move there, but everything else was pretty choppy. All right, so that's it for me. I hope you guys have um, a great afternoon. Those of you who are just getting into the community, uh, again, study up, uh, go through those classes, watch as many of those videos as possible. Everything that we do during the day is um, really, it's an example of the lessons that we teach you. So, you know, if you hear I'm trading a stock like staff, you know, by all means, I want you to, you know, look at it because there's obviously opportunity here, but you got to decide your entries and exits based on um, your own understanding of the patterns. You don't ever want to just follow, whether it's me or anyone else, because um, that doesn't teach you to be independent, doesn't teach you to be self-sufficient. One of the things that we do that is so rare is we actually explain why we take the trades we take. So you can learn from them right? And then you can become a better trader on your own. And then you can start throwing ideas into the chat room that are actually going to help me and some of the other traders who um, are profitable and are really just using the chat room for idea generation, not for exact entries or exits, right? That's, that's the value of this community. It's idea generation. All right. So anyways, I um, hope you guys have a great afternoon and we'll be back at it first thing tomorrow morning, 9, 9.15 for our pre-market analysis. All right. I'll see you all in the morning. If you're still watching, you must have really enjoyed that video. So why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.